Hello and welcome from Trend Signal for our review of the data and events of the week beginning the 18th of January. First two weeks of uh, the new year have uh, been pretty grueling for a lot of traders and investors. Uh, main drivers uh, in this risk off market remain uh, very much the news coming out of China and its impact uh, on the oil market and, and, and base metals and to a lesser extent precious metals. And there's very little let up as we speak on Monday morning. It is a public holiday uh, in the United States, Martin Luther King Day, uh, so the markets are shut. Uh, but uh, in Europe, markets are still quite active. Um, unknown quantity is Iran. Uh, the news over the weekend uh, regarding the lifting of sanctions on Iran sent uh, UK oil below $28, albeit briefly. Um, say unknown, um, the uh, he FT headlines uh, refer to the oversupply fears, i.e. the move uh, is based on fear, I guess, rather than any hard evidence. Um, but it is just more bearish news um, uh, in a very bearish market that has very, very few friends at the moment. Here's the uh, uh, headlines from the uh, Financial Times, very much focusing on the oversupply fears. Uh, nothing realized yet, obviously, but uh, the impact is... Uh, quite way right, wide ranging. Um, in terms of uh, output, uh, Iran could produce pre-sanction levels. It used to do about three and a half million barrels per day uh, and possibly more if made more efficient. Uh, the Saudi uh, stock market slumped on the news. Um, some questioning uh, why it should fall this way, uh, bearing in mind it has should have had time to discount something that uh, seemed to be uh, in the offing for a few days. Um, so as I say, fairly quiet markets uh, overnight. Uh, the People's Bank of China has imposed new rules to try and discourage capital outflows in uh, the uh, uh, offshore renminbi. Uh, it's basically forcing banks to set aside a portion of their offshore renminbi deposits as reserves. Uh, this uh, uh, reserve requirement will permanently raise the offshore uh, interest rates by forcing banks to set aside a portion of these deposits at the central bank, uh, basically where the funds obviously will not be then available for lending. So thus uh, pressuring uh, the uh, offshore uh, renminbi rate. Um, let's have a look at the data and events uh, this week. Uh, the, the key, key release this week is going to be the Chinese data. Everything is focusing on China at the moment and its effects on the resource sector. So not surprisingly, on Tuesday morning, uh, well, Tuesday overnight, really, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, there's quite a bit of data that's going to be released, not just the GDP, but we've got the industrial production and retail sales. Uh, GDP growth in the final quarter, uh, we're looking for an unchanged um, number of 6.9% uh, from the previous quarter. Um, industrial production is uh, looked, certainly looks to have slipped a little bit down from 6.2 to 6%. Um, ranges vary from, uh, for the consensus, anywhere between 6 and 6.1%. Uh, nevertheless, uh, both those uh, results would be a slip from the previous 6.2%. Retail sales, however, in China, looks as if they might have uh, bounced a little bit from the uh, from the December number due to the promotions that in the run-up to the new year, pushing the growth rate to 11.3% year-on-year from 11.2% in uh, November. So we're going to wake up on Tuesday morning. Uh, the data will be out. Uh, markets will have reacted either way. The elastic band uh, of the markets is pretty well stretched at the moment. That doesn't mean it can't be stretched further, uh, but we do expect some sort of a snapback. And the, the more the markets get stretched, the more violent that snapback will be, obviously. Um, other than the Chinese data, we've got um, uh, inflation data out in the UK and in the US. The UK Tuesday morning, 9.30, um, very benign. Obviously, with the recent move in um, uh, oil, uh, Brent and WTI, and the effect uh, also on the likes of the base metals, copper falling again, 3.5% last week, all very much deflationary, really. So rather than looking at uh, inflation, we'll be focusing on potential deflation. We're expecting an unchanged number of plus 0.1%, however, for the UK. Uh, and in the US, the CPI data is out on Wednesday afternoon at 1.30. Uh, the core in, uh, CPI number is plus 0.2%. Uh, 
that is uh, the same as the previous reading of plus 0.2 percent as I say very much focusing now on deflation rather than inflation for the time being. Um, other than that, obviously it's an important week for the European markets. Uh, we kick off on Thursday with the uh, European Central Bank's monthly uh, policy meeting. Needless to say, we're not expecting any change whatsoever, so it'll be a, a bit of a, a non-event in a way. Uh, in the press conference, there may be a little bit of reference towards the uh, deflationary pressures building up with, with the oil price uh, slip another um, what, 12 percent last week an extraordinary move really in total oil actually fell uh, at four dollars just over four dollars which is what 12 and 12 and a third percent so uh, um, the pressures are continuing to mount um, other than that in the European Union in the eurozone we've got the flash uh, manufacturing PMIs out on wet on Friday uh, kicking off the day both German and French uh, and general um, eurozone uh, flash manufacturing PMI data, um, all a bit of a mixed bag really, some slightly better, some slightly worse, but uh, that may attract a little bit of attention on, on Friday afternoon. And that's it really for the week. Um, as I say, the, the, the main event really is the Chinese data, uh, that's where all the focus is. Uh, that comes out at 2 o'clock on Monday night, Tuesday morning, which should lead for a fairly interesting Tuesday move in the markets. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. Bye for now.